welcome back to my channel um thank you so much for the love on the last video that was that was a lot <laughs> but now there are 11,000 of you what's up hey but hi nice to see you all i hope you like today's video i'm going to be customizing a figure of reagan from mob psycho 100 you may ask evelyn why did you make your own custom reagan figure when two of them are already on the market there's a scale figure and a pop-up parade if you want a more affordable version why would you make one for yourself right i'm sorry but i hate both versions okay i don't hate hate is a strong word i don't like them <laughs> i think they're both very flat looking and the poses are just so stale and stiff i mean you're making a figure of reagan why is he just standing there i don't know i personally just don't like them and they're not my cup of tea but i did really want to pre-order the mob figure and i feel like if you're gonna have mob you gotta have reagan so i made my own version i just thought you know why not make it myself <laughs> this is just my process this isn't really a tutorial video because this is my first time customizing a prize figure and yeah so i'm just going to be showing my process of doing that and here it is so i hope you guys enjoy it so here is our victim. He's someone from Detective Conan, but I specifically bought this figure for this project in particular. I drew up my plans for him in Photoshop. This was going to be a simple repaint with just an added sculptural aspect to his head and his shoulder. Unfortunately, this project was not as simple as I thought it was going to be. <laughs> All right, so here are the tools I used. So starting off with the Tamiya epoxy putty, this is a quick type epoxy, and then I also have some sandpaper. I believe this is in 400 grit sandpaper, um, and underneath is just a thicker sandpaper. And then I have two different types of putty here, Magic Sculpt uh, clay, this is a two-part epoxy clay that I use for sculpting, and of course my trusty X-Acto knife. I also have this book that I use as a point of reference. I really like the tutorials they have in here, even though I can't read them. I'll link it below in the description. Alright, so the first thing I had to do in order to prep him for this was to completely cut off his hair. I'm going to be re-sculpting the face and the hair anyway, so all of this has to go. Once I had that done, I pulled out a really strong nail polish remover I had to just completely get rid of his eyes. This figure is just going to look worse before it looks good. It's one of those trust the process kind of things. And this one you really had to because wow, does he look scary. <laughs> so now that he was properly prepped, I pulled out my two-part epoxy resin and I mixed it as thoroughly as I could. If you don't mix it super well, it will never cure. And I also pulled out some of my sculpting tools. I honestly don't use a lot when sculpting. I primarily just use the silicone one and my fingers. So after the clay is mixed, I grabbed a little bit and placed it on the back of his head because I felt like it was a little flat. I have a cup of water beside me that I am putting on my hands because I like to use the water and my fingers to smooth out the clay as much as possible. Here's a better angle of what that looks like. I also use my palms to try to smooth things out as well. Here I'm adding a extra tuft of hair on the top of his head and then I'm smoothing and blending that into the rest of the clay in the head sculpt. And then here are just some last minute details of me adding like these extra little hair pieces on the back of his head. I don't know, I thought they were cute. <laughs> so my plan for this at this point was to put some clay on his face and then once it dried, I would sculpt it using my X-Acto knife, which is usually how I sculpt my figures normally. This was something that did not totally work, but <laughs> you will see the journey I go through here. <laughs> so instead I moved on to the most important asset, I added a little more cake to him. I just felt like it was needed, so I sculpted that onto him. <laughs> Once I had finished that, I pretty much had my bigger sculpted pieces already on, and now I just had to wait a couple hours for it to fully dry. Alright, so a couple hours pass, and the clay should be super hard, and all that's left to do is sanding. Also, here is a prototype hair piece I was working on. I slowly kind of shave away and sand this as I go on throughout the video. So I usually take these different types of sandpaper and really scratch up around the edges to get it as smooth as I possibly can. I also employ the technique of wet sanding, which is putting water over the area so the dust particles get in the water rather than the air. Also, please wear a mask when you do this and do this in a well-ventilated area. I usually do this outside and not in my room. This is just for demonstration purposes. 
As you can see, the sandpaper has left a lot of scratches in there, and in order to cover this up, I grabbed two different types of Tamiya putty. This is the white one. I don't totally know the difference between the two, other than the fact that the consistencies are different, so I use them in rotation. Here I am going in with the thicker one, and I'm just using it to cover up all the holes, kind of like filling holes in cement. And then I sand down whatever is left of the putty. Putting is actually a common practice used amongst garage kit makers, and as someone who's made a garage kit before, I am definitely using some similar techniques that I have learned from garage kit making in this figure itself. And at least for me, the process of putting and sanding is the best way to achieve that very smooth look to your clay. At least when you're sculpting as robustly as I do by just putting an X-Acto knife up to your clay and just going crazy, so for me, that's what works. So once he's been fully sanded, I go outside and I spray him with a coat of gray paint. The reason I do this is so I can see how well my clay has blended out into the figure itself. It's kind of like a way to see your progress. The paint will surely show you all the cracks and all the imperfections, so you can clearly see what needs to be fixed. And you know what that means? Go back to sanding. And this is a process I will continue doing over and over and over again until it's as smooth as I possibly can get it. Or as, you know, as soon as I get tired and burn out, but you know. <laughs> Alright, so back to this hair piece. I tried using the Tamiya two-part epoxy here, and I realized that it stuck a lot more to the plastic than my actual two-part epoxy clay from Magic Sculpt. Because I sculpt with an X-Acto knife, this had led my usual clay to just chip off the plastic, but this one wasn't going anywhere, so I decided to switch to mostly this epoxy putty instead of my usual clay. Alright, so I got my dad to help me with this, and we drilled a hole straight into his forehead. <laughs> this is for the detachable hairpiece I'm working on. I stuck a piece of wire in there and was able to have the hairpiece just slip on in there, and now the hairpiece is detachable, which is exactly what I needed. So here we went back to the face, and man, I was really struggling with it. This is usually how I sculpt a figure. I go in with my X-Acto knife and just kind of carve and whittle away at it like if it was a piece of wood. This was not working at all, so I went in with my electric sander to smooth out any of my last minute stuff, and I really tried to sand the face as much as I can, but I just wasn't happy with it. I wasn't getting the depth I needed, and there was just something about it I was not vibing with whatsoever. I tried so hard to save it. I was like, maybe I could save it. I completely scrapped the face. I went to square one and I dropped the clay completely. I cut it all off and I instead just started sculpting the face straight up with the plastic. Like I was whittling into the plastic and made the face just by grabbing my X-Acto knife and just carving into the bare plastic. And honestly, it worked. I was so much happier with what I had going on. And then using like the thinnest piece of clay, I put it on top like the way you would put fondant on a cake. I sanded the hair piece a little more and it was looking really good. And I even made a little dimple that I was going to sand once he dried as well. So he was going to be attachable to his arm. Place nine. Today's video is sponsored, yes, we are sponsored everyone. Today's video is sponsored by me. It's me, I'm sponsoring it, it's me. I'm. Gonna... So I have an art shop, it's linked in the description if you wanna go check it out. I sell prints, I sell posters, I sell stickers. It's all drawn by me and made by me. So if you wanna get some cool art decor for your walls or you want some cool stickers for your journals, go check out my website. I just added a bunch of new stuff. It's opening on the 15th, so go get your stuff. All right, ad read over, back to the video. <laughs> So this is what it looked like the next day. I had sanded it down a little and man, I was digging this so much more. I know the difference may not look crazy, but I felt like this face had just so much more depth and just looked a lot better. And I just felt like it was a lot smoother too. So I went in for like my fifth time sanding and was hoping that we'd be able to get the smoothest possible result that I could. And the best way to really test that was to 
actually feel if it was smooth and it was really smooth to the touch. So I felt good going in for my last coating of paint to see where the progress was. Here I am just chipping at the sides and just kind of whittling away any other chunky pieces that need to get out. This is on the hair piece alone, but I also went in on uh, Reagan's entire body and try to get all the little dust pieces out. Once I did that, we were ready to go in and get one more final coat of gray paint to see our final progress. I just definitely needed to see if there was any more scratches or bumps I had missed that needed to be smoothed out, especially around the face. And this is how it turned out. Honestly, I could see a little bit of imperfections and it was good that I did this last coat here because I was able to buff out any last minute pieces that needed sanding or needed to be fixed. During this last phase, I added some last minute clay pieces, like some extra hair tufts, and I smoothed out his face a little more. But once I had that, he was ready for his last coat of paint. Imagine getting beat to sands. What a loser. Myself? <laughs> All right, so here I went in with Mr. Super Clear and I sprayed him everywhere and I sprayed all his little pieces to prime. And then I went in with some white spray paint and I put this pretty much everywhere. I sprayed the base, I sprayed him, and I did as many coats of this as I could until it looked fully white. And my God, would you look at that. He was perfect. I loved how he looked. I was so proud of this. I mean, this is this is everything I could have asked for. Oh man, do you see how beautiful that looks? All right, so this is where I messed up. I totally ruined the pants by doing this because I was like, oh, let me spray paint the bottom part gray. That makes sense because his outfit's gray, but it's actually not the same gray. So regardless, this was dumb. So I did this, but the problem was that underneath the paint was not fully dry, okay? So when I sprayed that extra layer, it like moved and creased the pants. So now there was all these little lines all over his pants and guess who had to start all over on the pants and sand them and re-putty them and do that all over again? <laughs> all right, fast forward to another day and we are finally going to paint him. As you can see, I did successfully spray paint the bottoms gray. It didn't matter because I painted them over with a different type of gray. But I'm starting here with the base and I mixed up some pink and I mixed it with a thorough amount of water because you want your paint to be super thin. And you want this to be thin because you're going to keep adding layers until it's fully opaque and that's how you get that really smooth looking paint job. I am not kidding when I say that it is what single-handedly makes the paint job look good. I know people use paint thinner. At least when you're hand painting, I recommend just water. There's no use in just wasting your money on paint thinner if you're just going to hand paint like I am. Um, I don't know about airbrushing, that's a whole different thing. But if you're just going to hand paint like this, please just use water. I feel like it does pretty much the exact same thing paint thinner would do. All right, so moving on to that, here's me painting the pants a more purpley shade of gray because I don't know, he has his outfit has more of a purple hue. And then I started painting Dimple and I wanted him to be this really shiny green, like if he was a very shiny booger or something. I don't know, I thought it was cute. Here I have Mob holding him up <laughs> so I can paint him. <laughs> also on the topic of paint, I'm not using any special paints unless you count the metallic shades at Michael's to be very special. But yeah, the, these are just craft store paints. The brand I'm using, I think, is called Basics. I got it for like one of my art classes, I kid you not, four years ago, and I'm still using those paints. <laughs> so here's me doing the shoes um, right before I do the most terrifying part of this entire project, which is doing the face. So when you do the face, you want to make sure you have a really thin brush like this. Sometimes nail brushes also work. Here I dip it in water and then I go straight into painting the mouth with a very dark brown color. You want to make sure you have the original skin tone on hand because when your hand shakes, you might mess up and you want to clean it up with the original skin tone. After that, I outlined the face with this tannish color so I can know where everything was going. And then I just filled that in with my paints. Again, these are very watered down paints and I build them up as I go. I honestly feel like this is one of my best skills, which is just painting at a really small scale. Like I really enjoy painting the faces on figures. I feel like I've gotten a lot better at it over the years. Here I am painting Dimple and the worst mistake I pulled here was painting his face without a reference. Yeah, I just drew him the way I remembered him in my brain. <laughs> 
So once I was pleased with the paint job and everything had dried, I got some chalk pastels in the color red and I just dusted his cheeks and his hair. But now that the paint job was done, I could finally rest. It was really hard to figure out how to do his face because I still wanted it to be in the anime art style. I really like one style, so I wanted to keep that look. But I also wanted it to look like a figure I had made. Like I still wanted it to have my kind of personal flair to it. So I was trying to balance those two ideas at the same time. All right, here's the base. So in order to get the logo on there, I did something a little weird where I printed out the logo on sticker paper and painstakingly cut it out with an X-Acto knife and then glued it on to the base and painted over it. Yes, this is really nonsensical and kind of doesn't make any sense, but I kind of like the 3D look the paper gave and I feel like it gave a little bit of like a homemade look. I don't know, I thought it was cool. I thought it matched. And after I finished the base, this figure was done. I was done with it. I had made it. So now I present you the final figure. So that was it. There he is, all finished and ready. You know, I realize he's not perfect, <laughs> and you know what? I'm okay with that, because this figure is like so perfectly me. I think it's no coincidence that all the Mob Psycho merch I own is handmade, and I think that's just because this series is a very personal one to me, as it is to many, and I feel like these labor of loves kind of show that. Like, there's something really sweet about having handmade figures from a show that I deeply care about. But I think that's what makes all handmade and customized figures just so cool because they're a figure no one else owns or has in their collection, not because it's rare, but because you made it. Sometimes just trying your best at something is what makes it worth it. Thanks for watching, guys! Like and subscribe, follow my Instagram, follow my Instagram, follow my TikTok. Maybe follow my Twitter. I don't know. I'm not very active on there. Reagan says to go like the video. Go share it with your friends. Go tell Good Smile Company to hire me. All right, bye. Watch the watch the hot four. Five watch four. Check me out, y'all. Nine a winner. Got a hot hand. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen.